Hey guys, welcome back. I got Thermal Grizzly's Conducto Knot Liquid Metal Thermal Paste. We're gonna use that today and see what happens. Niche meat aluminum! And now we're gonna put the liquid metal on an aluminum heatsink. So our setup here, I've got an older AMD 1090T processor with an aluminum heatsink. It does not have any copper. There's no nickel plating. Uh, we're gonna put the liquid metal on there, probably throw on a stress test for a few hours and see what happens. We know something's gonna happen. I'm kind of curious about thermals too, maybe even in the first 20 minutes, but under the regular thermal pace, we hit 63 Celsius with the uh, stress testing. And it's just an older AM3 Plus board. Um, I really don't care if I ruin it. This board actually has a BIOS issue anyways. So the only thing of any value here is the RAM and processor. And I don't care. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna shut it down and we're gonna get to work. Let me power off. All right, so this is my first attempt doing liquid metal and I have a pretty good feeling it's gonna go really well. Don't need a screwdriver for this because it's an older heat sink with just this retention clamp. This is one of the reasons I hate pin on processor ZIF style because you typically end up having the processor glued to the heat sink and then you can't you end up pulling the processor out of the socket. Oh, look with, at that. With the heat sink. And we'll clean the thermal paste off. I didn't bend pins, did I? No, we look good. Uh, at the beginning of this, I yelled at German, <laughs> niche meat aluminum, which means what? <laughs> not with aluminum. Okay. Literal translation, not with aluminum. Do not use liquid metal with aluminum because it, the gallium in the liquid metal will eat away and corrode. I'm also curious of just what the thermal difference might be, you know? Again, I have never done this before. I'm super excited. Now I've heard that sometimes the first squeeze of the syringe makes it like shoot. Ah, the good go. news is we're doing it on this and rather than... The... That's exactly what I want, that little dot. That's a tiny dot, Jamie. That is, is that going to be enough? It will. We're going to spread it now. You just kind of have to... It will spread eventually. You just have to keep at it. It has to warm up. I don't know. There it is. You see it's starting to spread on Yeah, there. there we go. So we just have to spread it. And if we need more, I'll put more, but I probably won't need more. You just have to keep going. But liquid metal is also electrically conductive because it's metal. And you don't want any over to flow over the edge of the processor and onto something that can short something out. Actually, that's spreading quite good. Yep, yep. You just have to be patient. I do think we don't have enough though because it's the, the layer is already so thin. I'm just going to put another little. And some right there. I've seen people use like brushes, like really fine brushes that to just like spread it around. I think the main key is to try to use something that doesn't have any lint. Yeah, and to get as thin a layer as you can. Yeah. With liquid metal, the thinner is best. That I think is it. Yeah. I think I can already see it. You see how it's like, Sounds like is it turning, turning black? black? Yeah, it's oxidizing very rapidly. All right, let's just mount it, go with it. I can just do it from here. Well, clearly I didn't short anything out because it posted. So what are our temperatures like? Well, our idle is around 36, 35. Well, let's put it under stress test. And actually, yeah, the temperatures do look better already. Our stress test temperatures right now are 53. They're slowly climbing, but at this slow climb, I don't think we're going to reach the same 63 that we had before. So there was a benefit, I think. We'll let it run for a while and see what happens. Let's find out. We may have just improved this computer. A few moments later. All right, welcome back, guys. Our system has been running for about 9 to 10 days now. We're going to power it down and check and see what's going on under this heatsink. So the stress test has been running for the entire time, so we should have a lot. I think we'll have a decent amount of damage. 
So the system is off. Now we're going to remove this heat sink here. That thing looks dry. That is very interesting. It's still, oh wow, check this out. So you can actually see where some of the pins are actually falling apart. Look, look at that. The fin, the heat sink fin just fell off and just came out. That is why you do not use liquid metal on an aluminum heat sink. And yeah, this thing is just dry. The liquid metal itself is gone. Um, yeah, all of the heat sink fins are just brittle. Look at that. That, I knew we were gonna have damage, but I didn't know it was just gonna be falling apart like that. Let's see if I can clean off some of this gunk that's here. So it definitely looks like the most damage done to it was to the fin stack itself, which is just gone. I mean, this is totally unusable at this point. I've got fins just falling out left and right. Now temperatures never fluctuated during our stress tests over the last nine, 10 days. They stuck around the mid 60s pretty much the entire time. But I may have to lap this heat sink or this uh, processor's heat spreader because I don't know if I'm gonna get this corrosion off of it. So there you have it, don't do it, just don't do it. All right, so there you have it, guys. Don't use liquid metal on an aluminum heat sink of any kind, aluminum surface at all. It will just chew through it and it'll fall apart. Look at this. You just break the aluminum. They just snap in half. So that's it. If you like the video, hit like. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, if you've got any questions, you want to put liquid metal on some other cool stuff, leave them in the comments. We'll see you guys next time. Niche meat aluminum! <laughs> I can see your giggle. Let's do it again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's great. I love it. Yeah.